Introduction to Fifty Years and Other Poems. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Larry Wilson. Fifty Years and Other Poems by James Weldon Johnson. Introduction by Brander Matthews. Of the hundred millions who make up the population of the United States, ten millions come from a stock ethnically alien to the other ninety millions. They are not descended from ancestors who came here voluntarily. In the spirit of adventure to better themselves, or in the spirit of devotion to make sure of freedom to worship God in their own way. They are the grandchildren of men and women brought here against their wills to serve as slaves. It is only half a century since they received their freedom and since they were at last permitted to own themselves. They are now American citizens with the rights and duties of other American citizens, and they know no language, no literature, and no law other than those of their fellow citizens of Anglo-Saxon ancestry. When we take stock of ourselves, these ten millions cannot be left out of account. Yet they are not as we are. They stand apart more or less. They have their own distinct characteristics. It behooves us to understand them as best we can, and to discover what manner of people they are. And we are justified in inquiring how far they have revealed themselves, their racial characteristics, their abiding traits, their longing aspirations. How far have they disclosed these in one or another of the several arts? They have had their poets, their painters, their composers, and yet most of these have ignored their racial opportunity and have worked in imitation and in emulation of their white predecessors and contemporaries, content to handle again the traditional themes. The most important and the most significant contributions they have made to art are in music, first in the plaintive beauty of the so-called Negro spirituals, and secondly in the syncopated melody of so-called ragtime, which has now taken the whole world captive. In poetry, especially in the lyric, wherein the soul is free to find full expression for its innermost emotions, their attempts have been, for the most part, divisible into two classes. In the first of these may be grouped the verses in which the lyrist put forth sentiments common to all mankind, and in no wise specifically those of his own race. And from the days of Phyllis Wheatley to the present, the most of the poems written by men who were not wholly white are indistinguishable from the poems written by men who were wholly white. Whatever their merits might be, these verses cast little or no light upon the deeper racial sentiments of the people to whom the poets themselves belonged. But in the lyrics to be grouped in the second of these classes, there was a racial quality. This contained the dialect verses in which there was an avowed purpose of recapturing the color, the flavor, the movement of life in the quarters, in the cotton field, and in the canebrake. Even in this effort, white authors had led the way. Irvin Russell and Joel Chandler Harris had made the path straight for Paul Lawrence Dunbar, with his lilting lyrics often infused with the pathos of a downtrodden folk. In the following pages, Mr. James Weldon Johnson conforms to both of these traditions. He gathers together a group of lyrics, delicate in workmanship, fragrant with sentiment and phrased in pure and unexceptionable English. Then he has another group of dialect verses, racy of the soil, pungent in flavor, swinging in rhythm and adroit in rhyme. But where he shows himself a pioneer is the half-dozen larger and bolder poems of a loftier strain, in which he has been nobly successful in expressing the higher aspirations of his own people. It is in uttering this cry for recognition, for sympathy, for understanding, and above all for justice, that Mr. Johnson is most original and most powerful. In the superb and soaring stanzas of fifty years, published exactly half a century after the signing of the Emancipation Proclamation, he has given us one of the noblest commemorative poems yet written by any American, a poem sonorous in its diction, vigorous in its workmanship, elevated in its imagination, and sincere in its emotion. In it speaks the voice of his race, and the race is fortunate in its spokesman. 
in it a fine theme has been finely treated in it we are made to see something of the soul of the people who are our fellow citizens now and forever even if we do not always so regard them in it we are glad to acclaim a poem which any living poet might be proud to call his own brander matthews columbia university in the city of new york end of introduction Fifty Years by James Weldon Johnson Read for LibriVox.org By Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. 1863-1913 to O brothers mine, to-day we stand, Where half a century sweeps our ken, Since God, through Lincoln's ready hand, struck off our bonds and made us men just fifty years a winter's day as runs the history of a race yet as we look back o'er the way how distant seems our starting place look farther back three centuries to where a naked shivering score snatched from their haunts across the seas stood wide-eyed on virginia's shore far far the way that we have trod from heathen crails and jungle dens to freedmen freemen sons of god americans and citizens a part of his unknown design we've lived within a mighty age and we have helped to write a line on history's most wondrous page a few black bondmen strewn along the borders of our eastern coast now grown a race ten million strong an upward onward marching host then let us here erect a stone to mark the place to mark the time a witness to god's mercies shown a pledge to hold this day sublime and let that stone an altar be where on thanksgivings we may lay where we in deep humility for faith and strength renewed may pray with open hearts ask from above new zeal new courage and new powers that we may grow more worthy of this country and this land of ours for never let the thought arise that we are here on sufferance bare outcast asylumed neath these skies and aliens without part or share this land is ours by right of birth this land is ours by right of toil we help to turn its virgin earth our sweat is in its fruitful soil where once the tangled forest stood where flourished once rank weed and thorn behold the path traced peaceful wood the cotton white the yellow corn to gain these fruits that have been earned to hold these fields that have been won our arms have strained our backs have burned bent bare beneath a ruthless sun that banner which is now the type of victory on field and flood remember its first crimson stripe was dyed by attucks willing blood and never yet has come the cry when that fair flag has been assailed for men to do for men to die that have we faltered or have failed we've helped to bear it rent and torn through many a heart breath battle breeze held in our hands it has been borne and planted far across the seas and never yet o haughty land let us at least for this be praised has one black treason guided hand ever against that flag been raised then should we speak but several words 
or shall we hang our heads in shame stand back of newcome foreign hordes and fear our heritage to claim no stand erect and without fear and for our foes let this suffice we brought a rightful sonship here and we have more than paid the price and yet my brothers well i know the tethered feet the pinion wings the spirit bowed beneath the blow the heart grown faint from wounds and stings the staggering force of brutish might that strikes and leaves us stunned and dazed the long vain waiting through the night to hear some voice for justice raised full well i know the hour when hope sings dead and round us everywhere hangs stifling darkness and we grope with hands uplifted in despair courage look out beyond and see the far horizon's beckoning span faith in your god-known destiny we are a part of some great plan because the tongues of garrison and philip's now are cold in death think you their work can be undone or quench the fires lit by their breath think you that john brown's spirit stops that love joy was but idly slain or do you think those precious drops from lincoln's heart were shed in vain that for which millions prayed and sighed that for which tens of thousands fought for which so many freely died god cannot let it come to naught end of poem this recording is in the public domain to america by james weldon johnson read for LibriVox.org by nema to america how would you have us as we are or sinking neath the load we bear our eyes fix forward on a star or gazing empty at despair rising or falling men or things with dragging pace or footsteps fleet strong willing sinews in your wings or tightening chains about your feet end a poem this recording is in the public domain o oh, black and unknown bards by james weldon johnson read for librivox dot org by linda marie nielsen vancouver b c o oh, black and unknown bards of long ago how came your lips to touch the sacred fire how in your darkness did you come to know the power and beauty of the minstrel's lyre who first from the midst his bonds lifted his eyes who first from out the still watch lone and long feeling the ancient faith of prophets rise within his dark kept soul burst into song heart of what slave poured out such melody as steal away to jesus on its strains his spirit must have nightly floated free though still about his hands he felt his chains who heard great jordan roll whose starwood eye saw chariot swing low and who was he that breathed the comforting melodic sigh nobody knows the trouble i see what merely living clod what captive thing could up toward god through all its darkness grope and find within its deadened heart to sing these songs of sorrow love and faith and hope how did it catch that subtle undertone that note in music heard not with the ears 
how sound the elusive reed so seldom blown which stirs the soul or melts the heart to tears not that great german master in his dream of harmonies that thundered amongst the stars at the creation ever heard a theme nobler than go down moses mark its bars how like a mighty trumpet call they stir the blood such are the notes that men have sung going to valorous deeds such tones there were that helped make history when time was young there is a wide wide wonder in it all that from degraded rest and servile toil the fiery spirit of the sneer should call these simple children of the sun and soil o black slave singers gone forgot unfamed you you alone of all the long long line of those who sung untaught unknown unnamed have stretched out upward seeking the divine you sang not deeds of heroes or of kings no chant of bloody war no exulting peen of arms won triumphs but your humble strings you touched in chord with music epreine you sang far better than you know the songs that for your listeners hungry hearts sufficed still live but more than this to you belongs you sang a race from wood and stone to christ end of poem this recording is in the public domain o southland by james weldon johnson read for librivox dot org by linda marie nielsen vancouver b c o southland o southland have you not heard the call the trumpet blown the word made known to the nations one and all the watchword the hope word salvation's present plan a gospel new for all for you man shall be saved by man o southland o southland do you not hear to-day the mighty beat of onward feet and know you not their way tis forward tis upward on to the fair white ark of freedom's dome and there is room for each man who would march o southland fair southland then why do you still cling to an idle age and a musty page to a dead and useless thing tis springtime tis work time the world is young again and god's above and god is love and men are only men o southland my southland o birthland do not shirk the toilsome task nor respite ask but gird you for the work remember remember that weakness stalks in pride that he is strong who helps along the faint one at his side end of poem this recording is in the public domain to horace bumstead by james weldon johnson read for librivox dot org by phil schempf have you been sore discouraged in the fight and even sometimes weighted by the thought that those with whom and those for whom you fought lagged far behind or dared but faintly smite and that the opposing forces in their might of blind inertia rendered as for naught all that throughout the long years have been wrought and powerless each blow for truth and right if so take new and greater courage then and think no more withouten help you stand for sure as god on his eternal throne sits mindful of the sinful deeds of men 
the awful sword of justice in his hand you shall not no you shall not fight alone end of poem this recording is in the public domain the color sergeant by james weldon johnson read for LibriVox.org by Nima. The Color Sergeant On an Incident at the Battle of San Juan Hill Under a burning tropic sun, with comrades around him lying, a trooper of the sable tenth lay wounded, bleeding, dying. First in the charge up the fort-crowned hill, his company's guide on bearing, he had rushed where the leaden hail fell fast, not death nor danger fearing. He fell in the front where the fight grew fierce, still faithful in life's last labor, black though his skin, yet his heart is true as the steel of his blood-stained saber. And while the battle around him rolled like the roar of a sullen breaker, he closed his eyes on the bloody scene and presented arms to his maker. There he lay, without honor or rank, but, still, in a grim-like beauty, despised of men for his humble race, yet true in death to his duty. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Black Mammy by James Weldon Johnson Read for LibriVox.org by Nima The Black Mammy O whitened head entwined in turban gay, O kind black face, O crude but tender hand, O foster mother in whose arms there lay The race whose sons are masters of the land. It was thine arms that sheltered in their fold. It was thine eyes that followed through the length of infant days these sons. In times of old, it was thy breast that nourished them to strength. So often hast thou to thy bosom pressed the golden head, the face and brow of snow. So often has it gainst thy broad dark breast lain set off like a quickened cameo thou simple soul as cuddling down that babe with thy sweet croon so plaintive and so wild came near the thought to thee swift like a stab that it some day might crush thine own black child end a poem this recording is in the public domain Father, Father Abraham, by James Weldon Johnson, read for LibriVox.org, by Phil Schempf, on the anniversary of Lincoln's birth. Father, Father Abraham, today look on us from above, on us, the offspring of thy faith, the children of thy Christ-like love. For that which we have humbly wrought, give us today thy kindly smile wherein we've failed or fallen short bear with us father yet a while father father abraham today we lift our hearts to thee filled with the thought of what great price was paid that we might ransomed be today we consecrate ourselves anew in hand and heart and brain to send this judgment down the years the ransom was not paid in vain End of poem this recording is in the public domain. Brothers by James Walton Johnson Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo Brothers See, there he stands, not brave, but with an air of sullen stupor. Mark him well. Is he not more like brute than man? Look in his eye. No light is there, none, save the glint that shines in the now glaring and now shifting orbs of some wild animal 
caught in the hunter's trap how came this beast in human shape and form speak man we call you man because you wear his shape how are you thus are you not from that docile childlike tender-hearted race which we have known three centuries not from that more than faithful race which through three wars fed our dear wives and nursed our helpless babes without a single breach of trust speak out i am and am not then who why are you i am a thing not new i am as old as human nature i am that which lurks ready to spring whenever a bar is loosed the ancient trait which fights incessantly against restraint balks at the upward climb the weight forever seeking to obey the law of downward pull and i am more the bitter fruit am i of planted seed the resultant the inevitable end of evil forces and the powers of wrong lessons in degradation taught and learned the memories of cruel sights and deeds the pent-up bitterness the unspent hate filtered through fifteen generations have sprung up and found in me sporadic life in me the muttered curse of dying men on me the stain of conquered women and consuming me the fearful fires of lust lit long ago by other hands than mine in me the down crushed spirit the hurled back prayers of wretches now long dead their dire bequest in me the echo of the stifled cry of children for their bartered mother's breast i claim no race no race claims me i am no more than human dregs degenerate the monstrous offspring of the monster sin i am just what i am the race that fed your wives and nursed your babes would do the same today but i enough the brute must die quick chain him to that oak it will resist the fire much longer than the slender pine now bring the fuel pile it round him wait pile not so fast or high or we shall lose the agony and terror in his face and now the torch good fuel that the flames already leap head high ha hear that shriek and there's another wilder than the first fetch water water pour a little on the fire lest it should burn too fast hold so now let it slowly blaze again see there he squirms he groans his eyes bulge wildly out searching around in vain appeal for help another shriek the last watch how the flesh grows crisp and hangs till turned to ash it sifts down through the coils of chain that hold erect the ghastly frame against the bark scorched tree stop to each man no more than one man share you take that bone and you this tooth the chain let us divide its links the skull of course and fair division to the leader comes and now his fiendish crime has been avenged let us back to our wives and children say what did he mean by those last muttered words brothers in spirit brothers indeed are we End a poem. This recording is in the public domain. Fragment by James Weldon Johnson. Read for LibriVox.org by Nima. Fragment The hand of fate cannot be stayed, the course of fate cannot be steered by all the gods that man has made nor all the devils he has feared, not by the prayers that might be prayed in all the temples he has reared. See, in your very midst there dwell ten thousand thousand blacks, 
a wedge forged in the furnaces of hell and sharpened to a cruel edge by wrong and by injustice fell and driven by hatred as a sledge a wedge so slender at the start just twenty slaves and shackles bound and yet which split the land apart with shrieks of war and battle sound which pierced the nation's very heart and still lies cankering in the wound not all the glory of your pride preserved in story and in song can from the judging future hide through all the coming ages long that though you bravely fought and died you fought and died for what was wrong tis fixed for them that violate the eternal laws naught shall avail till they their error expiate nor shall their unborn children fail to pay the full required weight into god's great unerring scale think not repentance can redeem that sin his wages can withdraw no think as well to change the scheme of words that move in reverent awe forgiveness is an idle dream god is not love no god is law and a poem this recording is in the public domain the white witch by james walden johnson read for LibriVox.org by nemo the white witch oh brothers mine take care take care the great white witch rides out tonight trust not your prowess nor your strength your only safety lies in flight for in her glance there is a snare and in her smile there is a blight the great white witch you have not seen then younger brothers mine forsooth like nursery children you have looked for ancient hag and snaggled tooth but no not so the witch appears in all the glowing charms of youth her lips are like carnations red her face like new-born lilies fair her eyes like ocean waters blue she moves with subtle grace and air and all about her head there floats the golden glory of her hair but though she always thus appears in form of youth and mood of mirth unnumbered centuries are hers the infant planet saw her birth the child of throbbing life is she twin sister to the greedy earth and back behind those smiling lips and down within those laughing eyes and underneath the soft caress of hand and voice and purring sighs the shadow of the panther lurks the spirit of the vampire lies for i have seen the great white witch and she has led me to her lair and i have kissed her red red lips and cruel face so white and fair around me she has twined her arms and bound me with her yellow hair i felt those red lips burn and sear my body like a living coal obeyed the power of those eyes as the needle trembles to the pole did not care although i felt the strength go ebbing from my soul oh she has seen your strong young limbs and heard your laughter loud and gay and in your voices she has caught the echo of a far-off day when man was closer to the earth and she has marked you for her prey she feels the old antean strength in you the great dynamic beat of primal passions and she sees in you the last besieged retreat of love relentless lusty fierce love pain ecstatic cruel sweet oh brothers mine take care take care the great white witch rides out tonight o oh, younger brothers mine beware look not upon her beauty bright for in her glance there is a snare and in her smile there is a blight end a poem this recording is in the public domain
Mother Night by James Weldon Johnson Read for LibriVox.org by Nima Mother Night Eternities before the firstborn day, or ere the first sun fledged his wings of flame, calm night, the everlasting and the same, a brooding mother over chaos lay, and whirling suns shall blaze and then decay, shall run their fiery courses and then claim the haven of the darkness whence they came back to nirvanic peace shall grope their way so when my feeble sun of life burns out and sounded is the hour for my long sleep i shall full weary of the feverish light welcome the darkness without fear or doubt and heavy lidded i shall softly creep into the quiet bosom of the night. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Young Warrior by James Weldon Johnson. Read for LibriVox.org by Phil Schempf. Mother, shed no mournful tears, but gird me on my sword and give no utterance to thy fears but bless me with thy word the lines are drawn the fight is on a cause is to be won mother look not so white and wan give god speed to thy son now let thine eyes my way pursue where'er my footsteps fare and when they lead beyond thy view send after me a prayer but pray not to defend from harm nor danger to dispel Pray rather that with steadfast arm I fight the battle well. Pray, mother of mine, that I always keep my heart and purpose strong, my sword unsullied and ready to leap, unsheathed against the wrong. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The glory of the day was in her face by james weldon johnson read for librivox dot org by linda marie nielsen vancouver b c the glory of the day was in her face the beauty of the night was in her eyes and over all her loveliness the grace of morning blushing in the early skies and in her voice the calling of the dove like music of a sweet melodious part and in her smile the breaking light of love and all the gentle virtues in her heart and now the glorious day the beauteous night the birds that signal to their mates at dawn to my dull ears to my tear-blinded sight are one with all the dead since she is gone End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Sonnet from the Spanish of Placido by James Weldon Johnson. Read for LibriVox.org by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. Enough of love that break its every hold. Ended my youthful folly for i know that like the dazzling glitter shedding snow cilia though art beautiful but cold i do not find in thee that warmth which glows which all these dreary days my heart has sought that warmth without which love is lifeless not more than a painted fruit a waxen rose such love as thine scarce can it bear love's name death to the pleading notes of its sweet lyre a frank impulsive heart i wish to claim a heart that blindly follows its desire i wish to embrace a woman full of flame i want to kiss a woman made of fire end of poem this recording is in the public domain.
from the spanish by james weldon johnson read for librivox dot org by linda marie nielsen vancouver b c twenty years go by on noiseless feet he returns and once again they meet she exclaims good heavens and is that he he mutters my god and that is she end of poem this recording is in the public domain from the german of Holland by james weldon johnson read for librivox dot org by linda marie nielsen vancouver b c three students once tarried over the rhine and into frau witherin's turned to dine say hostess have you good beer and wine and where is that pretty daughter of thine my beer and wine is fresh and clear my daughter lies on her funeral bier they softly tipped into the room she lay there in the silent gloom the first the white cloth gently raised and tearfully upon her gazed if thou wert alive o lovely maid my heart at thy feet would to-day be laid the second covered her face again and turned away with grief and pain ah thou upon thy snow-white bier and i have loved thee so many a year the third drew back again the veil and kissed the lips so cold and pale i love thee always i love thee to-day and will love thee yes for ever and a end of poem this recording is in the public domain before a painting by james walton johnson read for librivox dot org by nemo before a painting i knew not who had wrought with skill so fine what i beheld nor by what laws of art he had created life and love and heart on canvas from mere color curve and line silent i stood and made no move or sign not with a crowd but reverently apart nor felt the power my rooted limbs to start but mutely gazed upon that face divine and over me the sense of beauty fell as music over a raptured listener to the deep-voiced organ breathing out a hymn or as on one who kneels his beads to tell there falls the aureate glory filtered through the windows in some old cathedral dim and a poem this recording is in the public domain i hear the stars still singing by james weldon johnson read for librivox dot org by larry wilson i hear the stars still singing to the beautiful silent night as they speed with noiseless winging their ever westward flight i hear the waves still falling on the stretch of lonely shore but the sound of a sweet voice calling i shall hear alas no more end of poem this recording is in the public domain girl of fifteen by james weldon johnson read for librivox dot org by linda marie nielsen vancouver b c girl of fifteen i see you each morning from my window as you pass on your way to school i do more than see i watch you i furtively draw the curtain aside and my heart leaps through my eyes and follows you down the street leaving me behind half hid and wholly ashamed what holds me back 
half hid behind the curtains and wholly ashamed but my forty years beyond your fifteen girl of fifteen as you pass there passes too a lightning flash of time in which you lift those forty summers off my head and take those forty winters out of my heart end of poem this recording is in the public domain the suicide by james walton johnson read for LibriVox.org by nemo the suicide for fifty years cruel insatiable old world you have punched me over the heart till you made me cough blood the few paltry things i gathered you snatched out of my hands you've knocked the cup from my thirsty lips you've laughed at my hunger of body and soul you look at me now and think he is still strong there ought to be twenty more years of good punching there at the end of that time he will be old and broken not able to strike back but cringing and crying for leave to live a little longer those twenty pitiful extra years would please you more than the fifty past would they not old world well i hold them up before your greedy eyes and snatch them away as i laugh in your face ha ha bang end of poem this recording is in the public domain down by the carib sea by james weldon johnson read for LibriVox.org by linda marie nielsen vancouver b c one sunrise in the tropics soul soul mighty lord of the tropic zone here i wait with the trembling stars to see thee once more take thy throne there the patient palm tree watching waits to say good morn to thee and a throb of expectation pulses through the earth and me now o'er nature falls a hush look the east is all a blush and a growing crimson crest dims the late stars in the west now a flood of golden light sweeps across the silver night swift the pale moon fades away before the light girt king of day see the miracle is done once more behold the sun two los cigarellos this is the land of the dark-eyed gent of the dulce far neent where we dream away both the night and day at night-time in sleep our dreams we invoke our dreams come by day through the redolent smoke as it lazily curls and slowly unfurls from our lips and the tips of our fragrant cigarellos for the life in the tropics is only a joke so we pass it in dreams and we pass it in smoke 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 tropical constitutions call for occasional revolutions but after that's through why there's nothing to do but smoke smoke for life in the tropics is only a joke so we pass it in dreams and we pass it in smoke 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 three tise of tropic sensations the worst is senduda the tropical thirst when it starts in your throat and constantly grows till you feel it reaches down to your toes when your mouth tastes it like fur 
and your tongue turns to dust there's but one thing to do and do it you must drink tea stay tea stay a drink with a history a delicious delectable mystery cinco centavios el vaso senor if you take one you'll surely want more tea stay tea stay the national drink on a feast day how it coolingly tickles as downward it trickles tea stay tea stay and you wish as you take it down at a quaff that your neck was constructed a la giraffe tea stay tea stay for the lottery girl lottery lottery take a chance at the lottery take a ticket or better take two who knows what the future may hold for you lottery lottery take a chance at the lottery oh limpid eyed girl i would take every chance if only the prize were a love flashing glance from your fathomless eyes lottery lottery try your luck at the lottery consider the size of the capital prize and take tickets for the lottery tickets senor tickets senor take a chance at the lottery o oh, crimson lipped girl with a magical smile i would count that the gamble were well worth the while not a chance would i miss if only the prize were a honey-bee kiss gathered in sips from those full ripened lips and a love flashing glance from your eyes five the dancing girl do you know what it is to dance perhaps you do know in a fashion but by dancing i mean not what's generally seen but dancing of fire and passion of fire and delirious passion with a dusky-haired senorita her dark misty eyes near your own and her scarlet red mouth like a rose of the south the reddest that ever was grown so close that you catch her quick panting breath as across your own face it is blown with a sigh and a moan ah that is dancing and here by the carib it's known now whirling and twirling like furries we go now soft and caressing and sinuously slow with an undulating motion like waves on a breeze kissed ocean and the scarlet red mouth is nearer your own and the dark misty eyes still softer have grown ah that is dancing that is loving and here by the carib they're known sunset in the tropics a silver flash from the sinking sun then a shot of crimson across the sky that bursting let a thousand colors fly and riot among the clouds they run deepening in purple flaming in gold changing and opening fold after fold then fading through all the tints of the rose into gray till taking quick fright at the coming night they rush out down the west in hurried quest of the fleeing day now above where the tardiest color flares a moment yet one point of light now two now three are set to form the starry stairs and in her firefly crown queen night on a velvet slippered feet comes softly down end of poem this recording is in the public domain and the greatest of these is war by james walton johnson read for LibriVox.org by nemo and the greatest of these is war 
Around the council board of hell, with Satan at their head, the three great scourges of humanity sat. Gaunt famine, with hollow cheek and voice, arose and spoke. O oh, prince, I have stalked the earth, and my victims by ten thousands I have slain. I have smitten old and young, mouths of the helpless old, moaning for bread, I have filled with dust, and I have laughed to see a crying babe tug at the shriveling breast of its mother, dead and cold. I have heard the cries and prayers of men go up to a tearless sky and fall back upon an earth of ashes. But, heedless, I have gone on with my work. Tis thus, O oh Prince, that I have scourged mankind. Then Satan nodded his head. Pale pestilence with stenchful breath then spoke and said, Great Prince, my brother Famine attacks the poor. He is most terrible against the helpless and the old. But I have made a charnel house of the mightiest cities of men. When I strike, neither their stores of gold or of grain avail. With a breath I lay low their strongest and wither up their fairest. I come upon them without warning, lancing invisible death. From me they flee with eyes and mouths distended. I poison the air for which they gasp, and I strike them down fleeing. Tis thus, great prince, that I have scourged mankind. And Satan nodded his head. Then the red monster, War, rose up and spoke. His bloodshot eyes glared round him, and his thundering voice echoed through the murky vaults of hell. O oh, mighty prince, my brothers, famine and pestilence, have slain their thousands and ten thousands, true. But the greater their victories have been, the more have they wakened in man's breast the godlike attributes of sympathy, of brotherhood and love, and made of him a searcher after wisdom. But I arouse in man the demon and the brute. I plant black hatred in his heart and red revenge. From the summit of fifty thousand years of upward climb, I haul him down to the level of the start, back to the wolf. I give him claws. I set his teeth into his brother's throat. I make him drunk with his brother's blood. And I laugh, ho, ho, while he destroys himself. O oh, mighty prince, not only do I slay, but I draw man hellward. And Satan smiled, stretched out his hand, and said, O oh, war! Of all the scourges of humanity, I crown you chief. And hell rang with the acclamation of the fiends. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. A Midday Dreamer by James Weldon Johnson Read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson I love to sit alone and dream, and dream, and dream, In fancy's boat to softly glide along some stream, Where fairy palaces of gold and crystal bright Stand all along the glistening shore, a wondrous sight. My craft is built of ivory, with silver oars, The sails are spun of golden threads, and priceless stores Of precious gems adorn its prow, And round its mast an hundred silken cords are set to hold it fast my galley slaves are sprightly elves who as they row and as their shining oars they swing them to and fro keep time to music wafted on the scented air made by the mermaids as they comb their golden hair
and i the while lie idly back and dream and dream and let them row me where they will adown the stream end of poem this recording is in the public domain the temptress by james weldon johnson read for librivox dot org by cory matlack o oh, devil when you come with horns and tail with diabolic grin and crafty leer i say such boogeyman devices wholly fail to waken in my heart a single fear but when you wear a form i know so well a form so human yet so near divine tis then i fall beneath the magic of your spell tis then i know the vantage is not mine ah when you take your horns from off your head and soft and fragrant hair is in their place i must admit i fear the tangled path i tread when that dear head is laid against my face and at what time you change your baleful eyes for stars that melt into the gloom of night all of my courage my dear fellow quickly flies i know my chance is slim to win the fight and when instead of charging down to wreck me on a red-hot pitchfork in your hand you throw a pair of slender arms about my neck i dare not trust the ground on which i stand whene'er in place of using patent wile or trying to frighten me with a horrid grin you tempt me with two crimson lips curved in a smile old devil i must really own you win End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Ghosts of the Old Year by James Walden Johnson Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo Ghosts of the Old Year The snow has ceased its fluttering flight, The wind sunk to a whisper light, an ominous stillness fills the night. A pause, a hush. At last a sound that breaks the spell, Loud, clanging mouthings of a bell, That through the silence peal and swell, And roll and rush. What does this brazen tongue declare, That falling on the midnight air, Brings to my heart a sense of care, Akin to fright? Tis telling that the year is dead, the new year come, the old year fled, another leaf before me spread, on which to write. It tells the deeds that were not done, it tells of races never run, of victories that were not won, barriers unleaped. It tells of many a squandered day, of slighted gems and treasured clay, of precious stores not laid away, of fields unreaped. And so the years go swiftly by, each coming brings ambitions high, and each departing leaves a sigh linked to the past. Large resolutions, little deeds, thus filled with aims unreached, life speeds, until the blotted record reads, Failure at last. End a poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Ghost of Deacon Brown by James Weldon Johnson. Read for LibriVox.org by Corey Matlack. In a backwoods town lived Deacon Brown, and he was a miser old. He would trust no bank, so he dug and sank in the ground a box of gold. Down deep in the ground a box of gold. He hid his gold, as he had been told. He remembered that he did it. But sad to say, on the very next day, he forgot just where he hid it. To find his gold he tried and tried, till he grew faint and sick and died. Then on each dark and gloomy night, a form in phosphorescent light, a genuine hair-raising sight, would wander through the town, and as it slowly roamed around, with a spade it dug each foot of ground, so the folks about said there was no doubt twas the ghost of Deacon Brown. Around the church this ghost would search, and whenever it would see, 
the passers-by take wings and fly it would laugh in a ghostly glee hey hey he would laugh in a ghostly glee and so the town went quickly down for they said it was haunted and doors and gates of the story states before notice tenants want it and the town is now for let but the ghost is digging yet end of poem this recording is in the public domain Lazy by James Weldon Johnson, read for LibriVox.org by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. Some men enjoy the constant strife of days with work and worry rife, but that is not my dream of life. I think such men are crazy. For me, a life with worries few, a job of nothing much to do just pelf enough to see me through i fear that i am lazy on winter mornings cold and drear when six o'clock alarms i hear tis then i love to shift my ear and hug my downy pillows when in the shade it's ninety-three no job in town looks good to me i'd rather loaf down by the sea and watch the foaming billows some people think the world's a school where labor is the only rule but i'll not make myself a mule and don't you ever doubt it i know that work may have its use but still i feel that's no excuse for turning it into abuse what do you think about it let others fume and sweat and boil and scratch and dig for golden spoil and live the life of work and toil their lives to labor giving but what is gold when life is sped and life is short as has been said and we are such a long time dead i'll spend my life in living end of poem this recording is in the public domain Omar by James Weldon Johnson, read for LibriVox.org, by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. Old Omar, jolly skeptic, it may be, that after all you found the magic key to life and all its mystery, and I must own you have almost persuaded me. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Deep in the Quiet Wood by James Welvin Johnson Read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson Are you bowed down in heart? Do you but hear the clashing discords and the din of life? Then come away come to the peaceful wood here bathe your soul in silence listen now from out the palpitating solitude do you not catch even faint elusive strains they are above around within you everywhere silently listen clear and still more clear they come they bubble up in rippling notes and swell in singing tones now let your soul run the whole gamut of the wondrous scale until responsive to the tonic chord until responsive to the tonic chord it touches the diapason of god's grand cathedral organ filling earth for you with heavenly peace and holy harmonies end of poem this recording is in the public domain Voluptas by James Weldon Johnson, read for LibriVox.org, by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. To chase a never-reached mirage across the hot white sand, and choke and die while gazing on its green and watered strand. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain.
the word of an engineer by james weldon johnson read for librivox dot org by linda marie nielsen vancouver b c she's built of steel from deck to keel and bolted strong and tight in scorn she'll sail the fiercest gale and pierce the darkest night the builder's art has proved each part throughout her breadth and length deep in the hulk of her mighty bulk ten thousand titans strength the tempest howls the ice wolf prowls the winds they shift and veer but calm i sleep and faith i keep in the word of an engineer along the trail of the slenderest rail the train like a nightmare flies and dashes on through the black-mouthed yawn where the cavernous tunnel lies over the ridge across the bridge swan twixt the sky and hell on an iron thread spun from the head of the man in a draughtman's cell and so we ride over land and tide without a thought of fear man never had the faith in god that he has in an engineer end of poem this recording is in the public domain life by james weldon johnson read for librivox dot org by linda marie nielsen vancouver b c out of the infinite sea of eternity to climb and for an instant stand upon an island speck of time from the impassable peace of the darkness to wake and blink at the garish light through one short hour of fretfulness end of poem this recording is in the public domain sleep by james weldon johnson read for librivox dot org by linda marie nielsen vancouver b c o sleep thou kindest minister to man silent distiller of the balm of rest how wonderful thy power when naught else can to soothe the torn and sorrow laden breast when bleeding hearts no comforter can find when burdened souls droop under weight of woe when thought is torture to the troubled mind when grief relieving tears refuse to flow tis then thou comest on soft beating wings and sweet oblivion's peace from them is shed but ah the old pain that the waking brings that lives again so soon as thou art fled man why should thought of death cause thee to weep since death be but an endless dreamless sleep end of poem this recording is in the public domain prayer at sunrise by james weldon johnson read for librivox dot org by larry wilson o mighty powerful dark dispelling sun now thou art risen and thy day begun how shrink the shrouding mists before thy face as up thou spring'st to thy diurnal race how darkness chases darkness to the west as shades of light on light rise radiant from thy crest for thee great source of strength emblem of might in hours of darkest gloom there is no night thou shinest on though clouds hide thee from sight and through each break thou sendest down thy light o great maker of this thy great sun give me the strength this one day's race to run fill me with light fill me with sunlike strength fill me with joy to rob the day its length light from within light that will outward shine strength to make strong some weaker heart than mine joy to make glad each soul that feels its touch great father of the sun 
I ask this much. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Gift to Sing by James Weldon Johnson Read for LibriVox.org by McKinney Lee Sizemore Sometimes the mist overhangs my path, and blackening clouds about me cling. But oh, I have a magic way to turn the gloom to cheerful day. I softly sing. And if the way grows darker still, shadowed by sorrow's somber wing, with glad defiance in my throat, I pierce the darkness with a note, and sing, and sing. I brood not over my broken past, nor dread whatever time may bring. No nights are dark, no days are long, while in my heart there swells a song, and I can sing. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Morning, Noon, and Night by James Weldon Johnson Read for LibriVox.org by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. When morning shows her first faint flush, I think of the tender blush That crept so gently to your cheek When first my love I dared to speak. How in your glance a dawning ray Gave promise of love's perfect day when in the ardent breath of noon the roses with passion swoon there steals upon me from the air the scent that lurked within your hair i touch your hand i clasp your form again your lips are close and warm when comes the night with beauteous skies i think of your tear-dimmed eyes their mute entreaty that I stay, although your lips sent me away, and then falls memory's bitter blight, and dark, so dark, becomes the night. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Her Eyes, Twin Pools by James Weldon Johnson Read for LibriVox.org by McKinney Lee Sizemore. Her eyes, twin pools of mystic light, the blend of star sheen and black night, or which to sound their glamouring haze a man might bend and vainly gaze. Her eyes, twin pools so dark and deep, in which life's ancient mysteries sleep, wherein to seek the quested goal a man might plunge and lose his soul. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Awakening by James Walton Johnson Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo The Awakening I dreamed that I was a rose that grew beside a lonely way close by a path none ever chose, and there I lingered day by day. Beneath the sunshine and the shower I grew and waited there apart, gathering perfume hour by hour and storing it within my heart. Yet never knew just why I waited there and grew. I dreamed that you were a bee that one day gaily flew along. You came across the hedge to me and sang a soft, love-burdened song. You brushed my petals with a kiss. I woke to gladness with a start, and yielded up to you in bliss the treasured fragrance of my heart. And then I knew that I had waited there for you. End a poem. This recording is in the public domain. Beauty That Is Never Old by James Walden Johnson Read for LibriVox.org by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. When buffeted and beaten by life's storms, 
when by the bitter cares of life oppressed i want no surer haven than your arms i want no sweeter heaven than your breast when over my life's way there falls the blight of sunless days and nights of starless skies enough for me the calm and steadfast light that softly shines within your loving eyes the world for me and all the world can hold is circled by your arms for me there lies within the lights and shadows of your eyes the only beauty that is never old end of poem this recording is in the public domain venus in a garden by james weldon johnson read for LibriVox.org by linda marie nielsen vancouver b c twas at early morning the dawn was blushing in her purple bed when in a sweet embowered garden she the fairest of the goddesses the lovely venus roamed amongst the roses white and red she sought for flowers to make a garland for her golden head snow-white roses blood-red roses in that sweet garden close offered incense to the goddess both the white and the crimson rose white roses red roses blossoming but the fair venus knew the crimson roses had gained their hue from the hearts that for love had bled and the goddess made a garland gathered from the roses red End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Vashti by James Weldon Johnson. Read for LibriVox.org by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. I sometimes take you in my dreams to a far off land I used to know back in the ages long ago a land of palms and languid streams a land by night of jeweled skies by day of shores that glisten bright within whose arms outstretched and white a sapphire sea lay crescent wise where twilight fell like silver floss where rose the golden moon half hid behind a shadowy pyramid a land beneath the southern cross and there the days dreamed in their flight each one a poem chanted through which at its close was merged into the muted music of the night and you were a princess in those days and i i was your serving lad but who ever served with heart so glad or lived so for a word of praise and if that word you chanced to speak how all my senses swayed and reeled till low beside your feet i kneeled with happiness o'erwrought and weak if when your golden cup i bore you deigned to lower your eyes to mine eyes cold yet fevered like the wine i knew not how to wish for more i trembled as the thought to dare to gaze upon to scrutinize the deep sea mystery of your eyes the sunlit splendor of your hair to let my timid glances rest upon you long enough to note how fair and slender was your throat how white the promise of your breast but though i did not dare to chance a lingering look an open gaze upon your beauty's blinding rays i ventured many a stolen glance i fancy too 
but could not state what trick of mine the fancy caused at times your eyes upon me paused and marked my finger lithe and straight once when my eyes met yours it seemed that in your cheek despite your pride a flush arose and swiftly died or was it something that i dreamed within your radiance like the star of morning there i stood and served close by unheeded unobserved you were so near and yet so far ah just to stretch my hand and touch the musky sandals on your feet my breaking heart of rapture sweet it never could have held so much o oh, beauty haunted memory your face so proud your eyes so calm your body like a slim young palm and sinuous as a willow tree caught up beneath your slender arms and girdled round your supple waist a robe of curious silk that graced but only scarce concealed your charms a golden band about your head a crimson jewel at your throat which when the sunlight on it smote turned to a living heart and bled but oh that mystic bleeding stone that work of nature's magic art which mimicked so a wounded heart could never bleed as did my own now after ages long and sad in this stern land we meet anew no more a princess proud are you and i i am no serving lad and yet dividing us i meet a wider gulf than that which stood between a princess of the blood and him who served low at her feet end of poem this recording is in the public domain The Reward by James Weldon Johnson Read for LibriVox.org by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. No greater earthly boon than this I crave, That those who some day gather round my grave, In place of tears, may whisper of me then, He sang a song that reached the hearts of men, End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Since You Went Away by James Walden Johnson Read for LibriVox.org by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. Seems lack to me de stars don't shine so bright seems lack to me de sun done loss its light seems lack to me dere's nothing goin right since you went away seems lack to me de sky ain't half so blue seems lack to me dat everything wants you seems lack to me i don't know what to do since you went away seems lack to me dat everything is wrong seems lack to me de days jest twice as long seems lack to me de birds forgot his song since you went away seems lack to me i jest can't help but sigh seems lack to me my throat keeps gittin dry seems lack to me a tear stays in my eye since you went away end of poem this recording is in the public domain my lady's lips am like the honey by james weldon johnson read for librivox dot org by linda marie nielsen vancouver b c
breeze a sighin and a blowin southern summer night stars a gleamin and a glowin moon just shinin right strollin like all lovers do down de lane wid lindy lou honey on her lips to waste speck i gwin to steal a taste oh my lady's lips am like de honey my lady's lips am like de rose an i'm just like de little bee a buzzin round de flower wha de nectar grows my lady's lips dey smile so tempting my lady's teeth so white to shine oh my lady's lips so tantalizing my lady's lips so close to mine bird a whistlin and a swaying in de live oak tree seems to me he keeps a saying kiss dat gal for me look he mr mockingbird going to take you at your word if i meets my waterloo going to blame it all on you oh my lady's lips am like de honey my lady's lips am like de rose and i'm just like de la bee a buzzin round de flower what nectar grows my lady's lips to smile so temptin my lady's teeth so white they shine oh my lady's lips so tantalizin my lady's lips so close to mine honey in de rose i s'pose is put dear foe de bee honey on her lips i know is put dear just for me seen a sparkle in her eye heard her heave a little sigh felt her kinder squeeze my hand nuff to make me understand end of poem this recording is in the public domain tonk by james weldon johnson read for LibriVox.org by linda marie nielsen vancouver b c look hey tunk now ain't dis awful to ought i sont you off to school don't you know dat you is growin up to be a regla fool what's dem books dat i's done bought you look hey boy you tell me quick what's dat webster blueback spella and dat brand new arithmetic well i'm thinking you is latin in de school we best my soul you off in de woods a playin can't you do like you is toll boy i tell you it's jez scandalous the way dat you is goin on and you surely goin be sorry just as true as you is born hey i'm tryin hard to raise you as a credit to disgrace and you tryin heap much harder full to come up in disgrace these de days when men don't get up to de top by hooks and crooks tell you now dey's got to get de standin on a pile o books when ye sees a darky gone to de field as soon as light followin a mule across it from de mornin tell de night wokin all his life for vittles hoin tween de cotton rows when he knocks off old and tad ownin nothin but his clothes you can put it down to ignorance after all what's done and said 
you kin bet dat dat some darky ain't got nuttin in his head ain't you see dem white man settin der a fuss don't you know dey goes dere about nine each mornin bless yo soul dey's out by four dey jes does a little writin does dat by some easy means gals jes set and play piana on dem printing press machines chilly dem men knows how to figure how to use dat little pen and dey knows dat blue black spella from beginnin to end dat's de fact of education dat's de thing what's gwine to rule git dem books you lazy rascal git back to yer place in school end of poem this recording is in the public domain nobody's lookin but de owl and de moon by james walden johnson read for librivox dot org by linda marie nielsen vancouver b c de river is a glistenin in de moonlight de owl is settin high up in de tree dis little stars am twinkling wid a soft light the night seems only just full you and me though de trees de breezes am a sightin breathin out a sort o lover's croon there's nobody lookin or a spyin nobody but de owl and de moon nobody's lookin but de owl and de moon and de night is balmy for de month is june come then honey won't you come to meet me soon while well, nobody's lookin but de owl and de moon i feel so kinder lonely all the daytime it seems i rally don't know what to do i just keep sort a longin for de night time cause den i know dat i can be wid you and de thought just sets me brain a swayin and my heart a beatin to a tune come de owl won't tell what we's a saying and cause you know we kin trust de moon end of poem this recording is in the public domain You sweep to your mummy just the same by James Weldon Johnson read for librivox.org by Linda Marie Nielsen Vancouver BC She yours eyes ma little pickaninny go to sleep mama's watching by you all the while daddy is a walkin down in the cotton field walking fu his little honey child and yo mummy's heart is just a brimming full o lub full you from your head down to your feet oh no matter what some other folks may think of you to yo mummy's heart you's mighty sweet you sweet to yo mummy just the same dat's why she call you honey for your name your face is black dat's true and your hair is woolly too but you sweet to your mummy just the same up der in the big house where dey lib so rich and grand dey's got children dat they lubs i s'pose children dat is purty o oh, but dey can't love dem more dan you mummy loves you eben knows 
Dey may think you only an' you clothes dey may be po', But you shinin' eyes dey holes a night, Dat my honey, when you opens dem so big an' round, Makes you love be in your mummy's sight. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. A Plantation Bacchanal by James Weldon Johnson. Read for LibriVox.org by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. When old Mr. Sun gets tia da hanging high up in de sky, when der ain't no thunder and lightnin a banging, and de craps done all laid by, when yo bones ain't aching with de rheumatics, den yo ride de mule to town, get a great big jug o oh, de old corn juice, and when you drink her down, just lay away old trouble and dry up all your tears. Yo pleasure should to double and you bound to lose your cares. Just lay away old sore high upon the shelf and never mind to morrow twill take care of itself. When old Mr. Age begins a stealing though you back and knees when your bones and joints lose de limber feelin and am stiffen by degrees now dere's just one way to feel young and spry when you hear dem bonjos sound get a great big swing o oh, de old corn juice and when you drink her down just lay away old trouble and dry up all your tears your pleasure show to double and you bound to lose your cares just lay away old sorrer high upon the shelf and never mind to morrer twill take care of itself end of poem this recording is in the public domain July in Georgie by James Weldon Johnson Read for LibriVox.org by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. I'm back down in old Georgie where de sun is shining hot, Where de con it is a tasslin gitty ready for de pot, where de cotton is an openin and a whitenin in the sun and de ripenin o oh, de sugar cane is mighty night begun and de locust is a singin from every bush and tree and ye kin hear de humming o oh, de noisy bumblebee and de mule he stands a dreamin and a dreaming in de lot and de sun it is a shinin mighty hot 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 but everybody is a restin full de craps is all laid by and time full de camp meeting is a drawn purty nigh and we's put away de plowshare and we's done hung up de spade and we's eaten watermelon and a layin in the shade end of poem this recording is in the public domain a banjo song by james weldon johnson read for librivox dot org by linda marie nielsen vancouver b c when de banjos was a ringin and de darkies was a singin oh wasn't dem de good times show 
All de old folks would be chattin an de pickaninnies pattin as dey heed de feet a shufflin cross de flo an how we dance an how we'd sing dance tell de day dun break an how dem banjos dey would ring an de cabin flo would shake come along come along come along come along don't you hear dem banjos a ringin gib a song gib a song gib a song gib a song get your feet fixed up for a wingin well de banjos dey go plunk a plunk a plunk we'll dance tell de old flo shake will de feet keep a goin chook a chook a chook we'll dance tell the day done break end of poem this recording is in the public domain answer to prayer by james walden johnson read for librivox dot org by linda marie nielsen vancouver b c der ain't no use in sayin de lord won't answer prayer if you know how to ax him i know he's bound to hear de trouble is some people don't ax the proper way den when de gets no answer de doubts de use to pray you got to use exactly de expressions and de words to show dat tween ya faith and works you pens on works two thirds now one time i remember just how long i won't say i thought i'd like a turkey to eat on christmas day for weeks i dream bout turkeys a strutin in der pride but seed no way to get one without the lord provide and so i went to prayin i prayed with all my might lord send to me a turkey i prayed before day and night lord send to me a turkey a big one if you please i clar to heaven i prayed so much i must wore out my knees i prayed dat prayer so often I prayed that prayer so long, yet didn't get no turkey. I knowed twas somethin wrong. So on the night for Christmas, when I got down to pray, Lord send me to a turkey. I had the sense to say, Lord send me to a turkey. I know that prayer was right, and it was wholly answered i got the bird that night end of poem this recording is in the public domain that gal o mine by james weldon johnson read for librivox dot org by linda marie nielsen vancouver b c skin as black and just as soft as velvet dress teeth as white as ivory well they is i guess eyes dat jess as big and bright as de evening star and dat whole some sort o oh light lubbier by far hair don't hang way down her back plaited up in rows wid de two ends dat's behind tied with ribbon bows hands dat rally wasn't made for hard work i'm sure got a little bit o foot we's a number four you just ought to see dat gal sundays when she goes to de baptist meeting house dressed in her best clothes when she puts her white dress on and other things so fine now sir don't you know i'm proud o dat girl o mine 
End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Seasons by James Weldon Johnson. Read for LibriVox.org by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. When de leaves begin to fall, and de frost is on de ground, and de simmons is a ripening on de tree, when I hear de dinner call, and de chillin gather round, tis den de possum is de meat for me, when de winter time and pass, and de spring is come at last. When de good old summer sun begins to shine, oh, my thoughts then take a turn, and my heart begins to yearn, for dat watermelon growin' on de vine. Now de ye will surely bring round a season full us all, every one kin pick his season from de rest. But de melon in de spring, and de possum in de fall, make it hard to tell which time o year am best. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Possum Song by James Weldon Johnson. Read for LibriVox.org by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. Simmons ripen in de fall. You better run. Brother Possum, run. Mockingbird commence to call. You better run. Brother Possum, get out de way. You better run. Brother Possum, get out de way. Run somewhere and hide. Old moon am sinking down behind the tree. Old elf am thinkin and chucklin wid glee. Old tige am blinking and frisky as can be. Yo chances, brudder possum, look mighty slim to me. Run, run, run! I tell you, run, brudder possum, run, 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 run! I tell you, old elf's got a gun. Pickaninny's grinning, waitin' for to see the fun. You better run, brother possum, get out the way. Run, brother possum, run. Brother possum, take a tip. You better run, brother possum, run. Tain't no use in actin' flip. You better run, brother possum, get out de way. You better run, brother possum, get out de way. Run somewhere and hide. Day's gone to hound you all along de line. When they done found you, then what's de use in sighing? With taters round you, you surely would taste fine. So listen, brother possum, you better be a flyin'. Run, 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 I tell you. Run, brother possum, run. Run, 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 I tell you. Old elf's got a gun. Pickaninny's grinning, waiting for to see the fun. You better run, brother possum, get out the way. Run, brother possum run end of poem this recording is in the public domain brer rabbit used the cutest of em all by james weldon johnson read for LibriVox.org by larry wilson once there was a meetin in de wilderness all de critters of creation day was dar Brer Rabbit, Brer Possum, Brer Wolf, Brer Fox, King Lion, Mr. Terrapin, Mr. Bar. De questions for discussion was, 
who is de biggest man they pinted old jedge al to decide he polished up his spectacles and put em on his nose and to the question slowly he replied brer wolf and mighty cummin brer fox and mighty sly brer terrapin and possum kinder small brer lion's mighty vicious brer bar he's sorter spicious brer rabbit you's the cutest o dem all dis caused a great confusion mongst de animals every critter claimed dat he had won de prize dey sputed and dey argued dey growled and dey roared den putty soon de dust began to rise brer rabbit he jest stood aside and urged em on to fight brer lion he most tore brer bar in two when dey was all so tired uh, dat dey couldn't catch de breath brer rabbit he jest grabbed de prize and flew brer wolf and mighty cunnin brer fox and mighty sly brer terrapin and possum kinder small brer lion's mighty vicious at brer bar he sore suspicious brer rabbit Use the cutest of them all. In the poem, this recording is in the public domain. An explanation by James Weldon Johnson, read for LibriVox.org by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. Look here, explain to me the reason. Why you said to Squire Lee, there was twelve o chicken thieves in this heat town, including me. If he told you dat, my brother, he said stumpin dat warn't true. What I said was dis, dat there was twelve without including you. Oh. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. De La Piccaninny's Gone to Sleep by James Weldon Johnson. Read for LibriVox.org by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. Cuddle down, my honey, in your bed. Go to sleep and rest yo little head been a kind o ailing all the day didn't have no spirit for to play never mun to morrow when ye weak daddy's gwine to ride you on his back round and round de cabin fo so fast dare he's closed his little eyes at last the little piccaninny's gone to sleep cuddled in his trundle bed so tiny the little piccaninny's gone to sleep closed his little eyes so bright and shiny hush and when you walk across the floor step across it very soft and slow the shadders all around begin to creep the little piccaninny's gone to sleep mandy what's the matter wid the child keeps a sighing every little while seems to me i heard him sort o groan seems to me i heard him sort o groan lord his little hands am cold as stone what's the far off light that's in his eyes that's a light they's borrowed from the skies fall his little hands across his breast let the little piccaninny breast end of poem this recording is in the public domain the rivals by james weldon johnson read for librivox dot org by linda marie nielsen vancouver b c look here 
is i ever told you bout de curious way i won Annaliza, say i never well here's how de thing was done Liz, you know was mighty purty that's been forty years ago Nicaz to look at her dis minute you might spose dat it was so she was just de greatest traction in de county n bless de lamb ever docky was a courtin but it lay twist me and sam you know sam we both was wookin on de old john tompkins place Ne everybody was a watchin to see who's gwin to win de race he 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 now you must rally excuse me for dis snickering but i just han't help from laughin every time i tells dis thing ees was a sayin me and sam walk day side by side he a studdin me a studdin how to win liz for a bride well the race was kinda equal liz was sorta on de fence sam he had de most dollars and i had de most sense things de run along bout even till der come big meeting day sam de thought to win miss liza he'd had found de shuest way and you talk about big maidens none been like it for nor since there was sich a crowd o people dat we had to put up tents der was peachers from de east and der was peachers from de west folks had kilt most even chicken and was fatten up the rest gals had all new white dresses and bought ribbons for de hair fixin fo de opening sunday praying dat they'd be fair dat the rev jasper jones of mount moriah it was load was to preach de opening sermon so you know there was a crowd who dat man was so a preacher he had a voice just like a bull so der ain't no use in saying dat de meeting house was full folks was dear from big pine hollow some come way from muddy creek some come just to stay for sunday but de crowd stayed through de week some come riding in top buggies wid de wheels all painted red pulled by mules dat run like rabbits each one trying to get ahead other poor folks come drivin mules dat leaned up gainst de shaft hitched to broke down creaky wagons dat look like they'd drop in half but de biggest crowd came walkin wid their new shoes on their backs scuz was dat they couldn't wear them cuz de hills was full of tacks fact is it's a job for job a trudgin in de sun and heat down a long and dusty clay road wid your shoes packed full o feet cause they stopped and put dem shoes on when they got most to de do den they had to grin and bear it de tuck good religion shoe but i most forgot my story well at last that sunday came and it seemed that everybody blin and deef and halt and lame was out in de grove a waitin for de meeting to begin ef dat crowd had got converted twould a been de end o sin liz wooder dare in all her glory purty as a big snow flower i can member how she looked just same as twas de very hell but to make my story shorter while we was a waitin der 
Down de road we spied a cloud o' dust dat filled up all de air, An' ez we kept on lookin' out f'om 'mongst dat very cloud, Sam, on Marse John's big mule, Cæsar, rode right slam up in de crowd. You'd jes ought ta see dat darky, cl'ar I like ta lost my bref. Fool to use a common 'spression, he was bout nigh dressed to def. He had slipped to town dat Saturday, didn't let nobody know, An' had carried all his cash, an' left it in de dry goods store. He had on a brand new suit, o store bought clothes, a high plug hat. He looked zackly like a gentleman, tain no use denyin' dat. When he got down off dat mule and bowed to Lisa, I could see how she looked at him so admiring and just kinder glanced at me. Then I know to win dat gal, I should need some other means. Sides a hangin' round big meeting in a suit o oh humspun jeans. When they blow de horn for peaching and de crowd all went inside, I just felt as though I'd like to go off in de woods and hide. So I stayed outside de meeting, set underneath de trees. Seemed to me I sought der ages, with my elbows on my knees. When they sung dat hymn, nobody knows de trouble dat I see. Seems to me dat days was singin' every word of it for me. Just how long I might had sought der, actin' like a cussed fool. I don't know, but it just happened that I looked and saw Sam's mule. And the thought comes slowly tricklin' through my brain right there and then, that perhaps with some persuasion I could make that mule my friend. And I just kept on thinkin', and I kept a lookin' round, till I spied two great big sand spurs right close to me on de ground. Well, I took dem spurs and put em underneath o Caesar's saddle. So they pressed down on his backbone soon as Sam had got a straddle. Twas a pretty ticklish job, and just soon as it was done, I went back where I was sittin' for to wait and see de fun. Pretty soon he come to people, just a swarming out they do, talking bout de powerful sermon, never heard de likes before. How de monas fell de convicted, just de same a lumps o lead, how dat some was still a laying, some as if they been struck dead. And to reckly here come Lisa, Sam a strollin' by her side, and it seemed to me dat darky's smile was bout twelve inches wide. Looked to me like he had swelled up to bout twice his natural size, and I heard him say, I'd like you to be your escort tonight, Miss Liz. Then he made a bow, just like he going to make a speech in school, and walked just easy proud as Mars John Orr to untie his mule. When Sam's foot first touch the syrup, he knew there was something wrong, cause the mule began to tremble and to sorter side along. When Sam raised his weight to mount him, Caesar bristled up his ear. When Sam sought down in de saddle, then that mule commenced to rear, and he reared and pitched and capered, only ease a mule kin pitch, till he flung Sam clean from off him, 
landed him square in a ditch when dat darky rise will rally i felt kinder bad for him he had bust dem cheap so britches from de center to de rim all de plug hat does was left him was de brim round his neck smeared with mud from top to bottom well he was a sight i speck was de folks a laughin well sure i just surely thought they bust was sam a laughin twas de fust time dat i ever heard him cuss well sam sling off the backwoods i walked slowly home with lees when i asked just one question der wump something in her eyes made me know de was no need o oh, answer bein said and i just felt like de whole world was spinnin round my head so i said lees when we married must i wear some stole but clothes she says jeans is good enough for any poor folk heaven knows if homely virtues draw from me a tune in happy jingle or a half sad croon or if the smouldering future should inspire my hand to strike the seer's prophetic lyre or if injustice brutishness and wrong should make a blasting trumpet of my song o oh god give beauty and strength truth to my words or may they fall like sweetly cadenced chords or burn like beacon fires from out the dark or speed like arrows swift and sure to the mark end of poem this recording is in the public domain end of fifty years and other poems by james weldon johnson